So today is the 21st of October and I might be around a week to 10 days late but around the 10th or the 11th of October I sent off my application for medicine. Oh, it honestly feels like such a big load lifted because if any of you guys have applied to medicine or did apply to medicine in this um, round of applications, you know that it's not just a thing you do when you send off. It's literally like weeks if not months of preparation for all of your entrance exams and writing a personal statement and getting references. So oh, I am very happy. I can honestly sit here and tell you that I did my best to portray myself through my personal statement and everything through my application and I guess the next thing I can do is just sit and wait in anticipation for potential interviews which I'm keeping my fingers crossed for. But overall I just want to say that if you guys have just been through the same process well done for making it through because I'm right here with you I know exactly what it's like so give yourself a pat on the back because you deserve it. Alright, so now that I have managed to get that out of the way, I do want to apologise for sort of disappearing for a little period of time and just giving you nothing but radio silence. I say this because quite a few of you have been asking me about my um, application process specifically, for example, where, am I, where I'm applying to, uh, which universities, some specifics like that. But the reason why after making my video talking through my personal statement or like planning my personal statement. I didn't really want to discuss um, choices and uh, some of my own personal views and opinions for a few reasons really. I mean firstly because if you are somebody who was also applying in this round of applications I didn't want my choices and my personal opinions to affect your own views and opinions and your own choices and I didn't want to have an effect um, and make you either have a positive or a negative feeling towards your own application. So for that reason I decided to keep most of that private um, but since the application date is now closed, it closed on the 15th of October, um, I guess I can answer some of those questions and tell you a little bit more about my personal statement and tell you a little bit more about the universities I applied to and why I applied to them. Just because some of you guys might be interested, so let's get into it. Okay, so the last video I uploaded before this one was the video in which I planned out my own personal statement. And after that was done, I kind of put everything together and wrote a very, very rough first draft and then sent it to a bunch of people who I trust, who are intelligent, who are kind and more than anything are just amazing for taking the time out to actually read through and give me some helpful comments. And I think this is a good time for me to give them a bit of a shout out. So Maddie, Kenji, Heather, Felix, Jack and Helena. You guys, thank you so much. I have the best people in my life. I'm so lucky. So after taking on board some of the comments and opinions that I was given, I sat down and I kind of condensed it and wrote a final draft. And guys, it is hard to try and concentrate yourself as a candidate and as a person within 4,000 characters. So I think what that forces you to do is to just get to the point of who you are, why you want to study medicine, why um, you are a candidate that would be suited to a career of medicine or the lifestyle of medicine. And that can be a bit tricky, but we got there and that is one thing that was checked off the list. Then the next part was confirming my university choices. Now, from the beginning, there were a few choices that I always knew I wanted to apply to. And then there were a few choices that I had to move around a little bit based on my um, BMAT and UK CAT scores. Now, if you were wondering what my scores were, I have made separate videos on both of them and I will link them below. But I got pretty average, like I didn't get special scores at all for UK CAT or BMAT, um, to be perfectly honest with you. So because of that reason, I decided to take my chances with two undergraduate medicine courses and two postgraduate. I thought maybe that might give me a bit more of a chance. And what I also decided to do is pick a mix of UK CAT and BMAT universities. For my undergraduate choices, I decided to go for King's College London, which is a UK CAT university, and University College London, or UCL. Both are five years long. Actually, I think 
technically they are six years long, but because I already have a BSc and I am applying as a graduate, I don't have to do the intercalated year. Then for my postgraduate courses, I decided to go for Oxford, which is a BMAT university, and also Birmingham, which surprisingly doesn't have an entrance exam. And I think I decided to go for that choice, well, firstly because Birmingham is a really good institute, but also because I thought it might, again, give me a bit more of a balanced set of choices. Now, I know a lot of you guys might be wondering why those choices specifically, and I guess I can answer that question now instead of having to chat to you in the comments. Now, I know that the choices that I've applied to are some of the most competitive schools to get into, but to be perfectly honest, I think since I've moved to London, I have kind of started to build a life here and I obviously had to uproot my life after studying in Newcastle and kind of coming down here and studying my masters and finding a job here. My boyfriend lives with me in London and I have my friends here. So a really big factor was at least being in the south so I can be close to all of these extra things that I have built. And although it was extremely tempting to apply to universe to some universities in the north, that's one of my primary reasons for choosing mostly London-based or southern-based universities. So I already touched on this, but I applied to the King's and UCL undergraduate because I thought as a postgraduate it might give me a little bit more of a competitive edge to kind of make up for my entrance exams which weren't in um, the highest percentiles. Now I picked Oxford for the reason that they like to create clinician scientists as well as just clinicians and since I work as a researcher at King's College London and I studied my masters, um, like a research masters and currently I work in doing experiments and publishing papers, I thought that was a suitable option for me because doing research alongside medicine in the future is a goal of mine. So that seemed like one of the more sensible options to choose. And last but not least, Birmingham. Now, as I said, this university is already a fantastic institute, which I would love to study at. And I know that it is a bigger city in, it, in and of itself, and it's not part of the London circle, which I would like to be a part of. But I think because they don't require an entrance exam, that's a really good bonus point because they concentrate more on your uh, academics and also your work experience. So again, I thought it might give me more of like a balanced uh, application. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about is the whole process itself. So things like going through the UCAS system, how to link up your UK CAT and BMAT scores with the rest of your application, the separate application that you have to do for your Oxford uh, application, which is a bit different. You have to give some more extra references and go through a separate portal in addition to the UCAS. So yeah, I wanted to talk to you about those in a little bit more detail, but to be honest, I had a think about it and I realized that it's such a big area to talk about I thought maybe the better option is to get you guys to just leave any questions you have down below and I can answer them that way. And finally, for the announcement part of my video, I wanted to say that I have created a new Instagram account. I'm going to have it linked below. It's a little bit bare at the moment, so bear with me. But I have made it specifically for medicine and research and lab and uh, the clinics and all of these kind of things. So I have a place to kind of document my journey and post specific photos. Don't worry, I still have my Hey It's a Tusa Instagram account, which is more of my personal life and the kind of things I get up to outside of my bubble of medicine and science. So if you want to go and follow my new Instagram, as I said, it's a little bit bare, but if you get there, you will be one of the pioneers who will would have gotten there first. So I'll link that below if you're interested. And finally, guys, if you were one of the wonderful people who made an application to medicine this year, tell me something about how you found the process. Where did you apply to? Did you come across any challenges? Um, do you feel as relieved as I do to have sent off your application? Let me know and we can all have a little chat in the comments below. Okay, so I'm going to keep this brief because I just wanted to share a little update with you all. I hope that you're all having a lovely day and until next time, take care and I will see you later.